My mother had always been just a little peculiar. She liked doing things a specific way, and always on one specific day. There was a routine she found herself in since I was just a child, and no matter the situation, the weather, or her mood, the routine would never vary. On Mondays, she did the planning. She would spend early noon making a list, always on paper, about all the meals we would have that week. Then, she would go through the cupboards and the fridge to see what we still had, and added everything we needed to the list. In her perfect cursive handwriting, of course. On Tuesdays, she would go to the fish market just before sunrise, continue to visit the butcher around noon, and finally buy all the other items we needed from the big grocery store just at the outskirts of our suburban neighborhood. On Wednesdays, she cleaned, or rather, we cleaned. While mom liked things a specific way and would usually go over whatever I did after I was finished, she did always accept my help. I suppose it was more for building my character than an actual need of help. On Thursdays, she did laundry. When the sun was shining, she would hang the clothes on a line out in the garden, and if she didn't, she would use the dryer inside. Either way, Thursdays always smelled like lavender softener. On Fridays, she baked muffins and cake and biscuits. With many spices and herbs, she would make her own creations. Those were the only days that smelled even better than Thursdays. On Saturdays, she would go for a drink. When I was younger, that's when the babysitter would come, but now, she could go without having to take care of that. Sometimes, she would even see her friends and come back in a giggly mood. Sundays were what we called free days. It was the only day that was not assigned to one specific task. We work during the week so that the weekend can be enjoyed. I heard that sentence more often than I could ever count. As I said, my mother had always been a little peculiar, and as I grew older, I realized she was also a little, if not a lot, compulsive. In all my years in life that I lived in that small suburban house with my mother, I never saw her deviate from that schedule. Of course, I wasn't always there to observe, but when I came home from school on Tuesdays, the fridge and cupboards would be fully stocked again. Thursdays would smell like lavender, and Friday we always had fresh baked goods. Even on holiday, she would find ways to squeeze in whatever needed to be done on the specific days of the week. My mother wasn't always entirely mentally stable, which is something hard to witness as a child and especially to admit. You want your parents to always do well and tell yourself that they are fine even when they're not. However, in most ways, she luckily seemed to be in control of her compulsions. And most of all, she was always kind and loving. To both of us, despite the occasional fight, especially as I grew older and resented her slightly old-fashioned ways, still, we were a happy family and in general, things were alright. Until last week, when my mother, for the first time, ever since I can remember, seemed to be out of sync. It started on Monday, when I woke up and found my mother in the living room, watching something strange on TV. The sight of that was weird enough already, because normally, she would never turn on the television by herself, before evening, and now she was sitting there, wearing her flowery dress and high heels inside, while watching something with complete focus in her eyes. Mom? I muttered. Her head slowly turned to the left. She looked up at me and looked at me precisely. No words came out of her mouth. When I looked over at the screen to see what she had been so mesmerized by, I noticed the white noise. There was no channel on. I sat down next to her, tried to find the words to ask what was wrong, but I couldn't. She was acting as if everything was perfectly normal until Dad came down the stairs with his briefcase in hand. Good afternoon, honey. Are you ready for lunch? She asked him. My father tilted his head. He could tell that something was wrong. But he didn't mention it either. Instead, he only lifted his briefcase a little and said, I must go to work. But of course, my mother smiled. I exchanged a concerned look with my father. He definitely knew that something was up, and I wondered whether they had a fight last night. Was that why mom was acting strange? Before I could talk to him, however, he had disappeared, and Mom jumped up only two seconds later. I need to go to the dry cleaners. You can make yourself something to eat, yes? 
On Tuesday, I didn't expect to see my mother when I got up. At this time, she normally would be at the fish market to get the freshest catch. Instead, I found her by the kitchen table, nervously writing something down. My dad was sitting opposite of her, having scrambled eggs and bacon. Are you making a shopping list? I asked. It was the wrong day, but at least she was acting a little more normal, even though she was wearing the exact same dress as the day before. My mother smiled and nodded. Yes, is there anything you need? Eggs and milk. We're out of cornflakes too. She nodded. Good morning, kiddo, Dad said. They were both sitting together, having breakfast, and so I thought that things were back to normal again. He emptied his coffee and got up. Time for work, he called out. Oh, honey, could you get some groceries on your way back? Salt, fish, and vinegar, please? Again, my father and I exchanged a look of confusion. Well, the one of mine was the one of confusion, but his look seemed to be of distress. I nodded to silently tell him that I have things in control. Dad nodded back and then proceeded to head to the door. Of course, honey. On Wednesday, I found her in the garden digging up dirt. The exact opposite of what we normally would be doing on that day. She was digging a hole, big and wide, and I simply couldn't say what on earth she might need it for. Dad was gone before I had woken up, so I couldn't talk to him, but I promised myself I would do so tonight. Something was wrong with my mother. At first, I was worried, but I started getting a bit scared, both for her and of her. Is something wrong? My father asked that evening. It was difficult to find a moment alone. Mom always seemed to be somehow around. I hated that I had to get away from her to voice my concerns, but I was worried that she wasn't entirely stable. She didn't do anything she normally does. And did you see that hole outside, Dad? I paused for a moment. I think she might really need help. Dad tilted his head and looked through the window to the garden. I suppose he hadn't seen the hole out there earlier. I won't go to work tomorrow. I'll stay here with you. Is that all right? I sighed in relief. Together, we might be able to figure out what was going on, and maybe he could start a conversation with her. Yes, thanks, Dad. I think that would be really helpful. Thursday, I found Mom in the garden again. Normally, this wouldn't be so strange, as I would usually find her there hanging up the sheets. However, this Thursday, it was stormy outside. It had been raining all morning, and it didn't appear as if it would end anytime soon. What are you doing? It's pouring cats and dogs. I shouted from the garden. Dad who heard me shouting had appeared behind me and was holding my shoulder. No cats and dogs, fish. Mom turned around and laughed. And that is when we saw what she really was doing out there. She was hanging the chopped off heads of the fish Dad had brought home on the clothesline. Mom? I could only bring out a whisper. Something is wrong. We need to help her. Before I could move, Dad was already running outside and guiding my mother back to her living room. Thursday turned into Friday without a moment of sleep, at least for me. I couldn't close my eyes without heads of fish appearing in the front of my mind, and the sight of my mother in the same damn dress and that plastered on smile. Tired and exhausted, I stumbled down the stairs to find my parents both sitting in front of the television. I didn't even bother talking to them and went straight to the kitchen. For the first time in years, we had no sweet smell coming from it. No, instead, a stench of vinegar made its way to my nose. We hardly had any food in the house. I suppose Mom had completely forgotten about it, and Dad didn't want to leave her in her current stage. He hardly left her side anymore. Without talking to them, I started with all the chores of the past days, wrote a shopping list. I cleaned and threw some clothes in the washing machine. This might sound as if I only wanted my mother to get back to doing the household, but I swear it had nothing to do with that. I simply was worried because she wasn't herself anymore. The following morning, all the items that I wrote on the list were sitting in paper bags on the kitchen counter. I assumed that Dad had gotten out to buy them. On Saturday, she did the most terrifying thing so far, a sight I will not be able to delete from my mind anytime soon. It started only in the evening. The entire day, both my parents were acting normal. Mom even cooked, and we sat around the table, talking and laughing. 
She did most of the talking, and I could have sworn she was entirely herself again. Or, she had learned to adapt, at least in some ways. When night came, however, everything turned entirely messed up. I woke up from the sound of a loud clatter and immediately jumped out of bed. I had been a nervous wreck lately, and it didn't take much to startle me. The sound was coming from downstairs, and my initial thought was that someone had broken in, but then I heard my mother humming something from downstairs. Mom? I called out. Go to bed, child. She shouted back, but I was already making my way up the stairs. She had painted the walls with strange anagrams using red paint. Still wearing the same dress, she looked up and smiled, but this time it appeared far less sincere. I believe I even saw a twitch in her eye. Dad was sitting on a chair next to her. Mom, we need to get you help. I'll call the hospital, okay? No, no, I will help, Dad said, and took the paint can from her hand. A tear rolled down her cheek, but the smile never disappeared. Why, thank you, honey. Families help each other, Dad smiled back. Yes, well, I should go buy more paint. The child will help me, Mom said. Dad glanced at me. What the fuck? It's the middle of the night. Look, Mom, I'm really sorry, but... She held my mouth shut with her hand before I could say another word. We have to buy paint. Any normal mother and her child do just that. It is of utter importance for a decent home. Dad looked around at the red paint on the wall and my mother's face and finally said the last thing I expected. That sounds perfectly reasonable. See you soon, honey. I had no idea what to do. It seemed that both my parents had lost their minds, but I couldn't possibly let my mother leave on her own, or let her drive a car in that state. So I went outside with her and sat behind the steering wheel with the intention to drive her to a hospital. However, as soon as I started driving, I couldn't for the life of me remember what direction I had to go. Just keep going straight and follow the street, my mother finally said. Her smile had disappeared and her leg was shaking. Just keep going, honey. I had no idea what to say, and so I kept going straight until we had left the neighborhood and the surrounding area as well. We found ourselves on the freeway when I couldn't hold it in anymore. I found the nearest exit and stopped. My mother was trembling, and in the dark light with the splatters of red paint on her face, I finally realized that I might have made a huge mistake. Mom? I hardly brought out the word. She opened her mouth, but no words came out at first. She swallowed and then finally spoke. I'm so sorry, my love. I didn't want to believe it. It made no sense. What are you talking about? She looked at me as if I was the one losing my mind. That thing in there, that, that was not your father. Didn't you notice? At first, I thought I would only act slightly differently to see if he would notice that something was off but it only copied whenever we were doing or saying. She took a deep breath. I woke up a few times at night. It never sleeps. It sits in the bed with its eyes open, waiting for us to wake up. I, I'm so sorry. I just couldn't believe it at first. I thought maybe something was wrong with your father. We should have left or called for help, but she stayed silent for a moment. My memories were blurry and I had to make sure first Make sure that it was him and not me. My palms wouldn't stop sweating, and my head started racing like crazy. This whole week, I had been so focused on my mother, I didn't notice that Dad only agreed to the things I was saying. He didn't do anything, and suddenly, it felt as if something shattered in my mind. My mother had always been a little peculiar, especially after my father passed away. Mom, that wasn't our home, was it? I gulped. How did we end up there? She looked at me, a reflection of my own fear and confusion. I have absolutely no idea. It must have lured us in and made us forget. My mom has always struggled with her weight and body image, so I suppose that's what drew him to her. Despite her problems, she never let it ruin her spirit and zest for life. It was never a day a smile wasn't on her face. She was smiling the day he walked through the doors of the community center and introduced himself as the genius behind a radical new weight loss program. He was as skinny as a rake, 
gangly, gaunt, and tall, and yet he claimed to have been medically diagnosed as morbidly obese just a week prior. I didn't like the look of him. I always came with my mom to her Weight Watchers meetings for moral support. I never had an issue with any of the other people who took the class, but this man, there was just something unnerving about his piano key smile and his slick back hair, door to door salesman look. Just take one pill a day and the weight will just drop off. He grinned as he held up a black capsule in his fingers. What was most upsetting was the eagerness of my mom and the others to try these pills out. I strongly and vocally protested against using them. I mean the pills could have been anything and diet pills aren't exactly known for being safe at the best of times. However, my mom and the others looked at me like I was some outsider, an intrusive voice who didn't know what it was like to be one of them. Well young man, I understand your hesitation, but I assure you, I've taken them myself. They are perfectly safe and totally organic, preached the salesman. Ken, a great swell of a man, asked how much they would cost. Nothing, nothing at all, answered the man with a wide grin. If I wasn't suspicious before, I was now. Nothing in this world is free. I could see my disbelief was offending the group and upsetting my mom, so I kept my mouth shut. Whilst my mom and others rushed up and snatched box after box, one pill a day for one week, eat anything you want and gain nothing. That saying, if it sounds too good, it probably is, comes to mind. However, I didn't want to upset my mom. So, when she started taking the pills, I was supportive and kept my doubts to myself. To my surprise, it seemed to be working. She would gorge herself like a beast devouring an all-you-can-eat buffet in one sitting, and yet, when she'd get on the scales the next morning, she hadn't gained a single pound. Stranger still was the slime. Around the same time of my mom's new diet, slime trails like that of a slug began to appear in the house. They were far larger than slug trails though, and all seemed to slither through the house and out through the cat flap. I told my mom, but she didn't seem bothered. In fact, all she was interested in was eating. I wasn't sure if it was because she was actually hungry, or whether it was because she wanted to prove how good the pills were. McDonald's, Domino's, KFC and Wendy's, you name it, and she would shovel it in. She was like a starved animal, gluttonous and unending in her appetite. But she told me not to worry. She had the pills they'd keep her from gaining weight. Eventually though, her pills ran out, and that's when things went from weird to worst. Mom started dropping the weight like crazy. She went from like an XL to a large in a day, and then a day after, she was down to a small. In a matter of a week, her body was like a skeleton, her clothes hanging off of her like blankets, but she was thrilled. Look how thin I am, aren't I beautiful? She said, looking at herself in the mirrors. I wanted to tell her she was always beautiful, but I didn't. Yeah, mom, you look amazing, I said. However, she just got thinner and thinner. After my mom became bedbound and nearly unable to breathe, I stayed by her bed every night, often falling asleep in her armchair near her. One night, I heard an unusual sound, a slurping sound. Slurp, slurp, slurp. That sound was disgusting and eventually it roused me from my slumber. When I opened my eyes, I let out an audible gasp, swallowing all the air in the room. Before me was a shocking sight. Sucking on my mother's flesh were countless white, bulbous, leech-like things. They were everywhere, each the size of a football, and all of them miraculously snacking on my mother. Shocked and reviled, I began yanking and pulling their sucker-like mouths from her skin. Yet, no matter how many I removed, more seemed to appear out of nowhere. Each of the slimy slugs sucked and slurped upon my mother, her skin shriveling around their mouths. Where did they all come from? I thought. But, as I started snatching them from her, I got my answer. One of the bloated white things swelled from my mom's stomach, growing from her like a fat-filled boil before wriggling free from her. All of a sudden, 
the worming fat spawn stopped feeding and began wriggling away from her, dropping to the ground and slithering in unison, as if they were following an invisible road. I followed them to the back door, where they exited through the cat flap and journeyed outside. Stepping outside, I found the strange salesman standing there in his skeletal frame, wrapped in a tight, fitting black suit. Desperation. There's nothing sweeter, is there? The man grinned, his white, crooked teeth smiling like a hungry animal. I went to demand what he was doing in my back garden when it happened. He plucked up one of the white fat spawn and swallowed it, alive and wriggling. Delicious. The man smiled. I asked what he was, and he took great delight in telling me, I'm the hunger in all beasts, I'm the fowler of water, and the whimper of the starving. I take all you have and rob the land, he declared. One by one, the wriggling white worms crawled into the man. Sinking into his skin and clothes, they became one with him, fed him even. The process caused him to let out a disturbing, orgasmic sound that gave me shivers. I demanded he saved her, stop whatever he had started, but he refused. Instead, he just kept laughing to himself, entertained by my utter inability to do anything. You're a clever kid. Your mom should have listened to you. Alas, I can't help you. I have a prior engagement with my brothers." The man grinned. Then, out of the night, came striding a great black stallion. It was emaciated as a salesman, and had large white snooker ball eyes. This horse, this man, I knew who he was. I went to Sunday school. My mom demanded it. He was famine, the great hunger. My shock and bewilderment brought a smile to the gaunt fellow's face as he mounted his horse. I picked up a wooden fence post, but before I could move towards him, his head twisted around and froze me with his gaze. My stomach clenched up, my skin tightened, and my head spun around inside its skull. Hunger can't be fought, lad. He smirked, and with that, I fell to the ground. Exhausted and drained, I could do nothing to stop him as he rode off into the night. I never saw him again, and people just seemed to forget about him. Even me and my mom couldn't recall the name he gave us when he entered our community center. The only thing he left behind, the only evidence of his presence, were the hungry. Mom, Ken, and Mrs. Hodge from down the road and the rest of the Weight Watchers bunch were all hospitalized with a case of deliberate starvation. I explained to the doctors that it was the pills and the man, but they didn't believe me. The weight continues to drop off my mom and continues to crawl away to where the fat worms slither, I don't know. She's a little more than a skeleton now, but my mom always looks to me every day with a wheezing smile and asks if she is still beautiful. I always say the same thing, yeah mom, you look amazing, I'd whisper. So let this be a lesson. If a man offers you to make you thin, do not trust him. Do not take that pill. You're perfect just the way you are.